Underspin. Still keeping it going. And wins it. That's no out. It. That could be a bad one. Roach had an easy forehand volley, played it two rod, and then missed a fairly easy overhead. That's what Laver means when he says you got to hack a little too in this game. And he just goes after everything now. Hard to believe how hungry he can be in a spot like this. All over the court. And Laver gets what he's looking for, that break point. By him. Again, Laver squeezes Roach into that corner. Break point. The forehand, and he's broken. Yeah. We have some videotape coming of an excellent rally here as the first serve into the backhand of Laver, a let ball, which Tony plays off the backhand back into the backhand of Laver. And on the preceding point, we saw Roach had missed an overhead, so smart. Laver decided to lob again. A good smash this time, but those spike shoes help Rod get over to it. And here's a good shot down the line of the back end, which Rod can now come to the net off of a deep approach and produce an error from Tony Roach. One of the big points that helped Rod Laver break that game. Roach has had one shot at him along the way before in the semifinals of the Australian Championship in which Laver won 6-3 in the fifth. It might take a little time, but it sure looks like Rod from here. Road shot. Touch and the that overhead again from the very got it. Roach a shot, rocket it at the labor. Oh. Labor is the rocket. Or videotape of a. Another one of many, many great rallies as Roach serves, comes in on the backhand. He has to change directions, gets the volley down the line as just before it drops, Rod gets a good shot. Now watch this smash and watch the labor return. Bang, just inside the line. That will go out. Uh. Labor. Labor has the forehand. It goes by Tony Roach. And that could be just about the match. One lead. But I'd like to comment you said about the 62 Grand Slam, which was a great feat, but the 69 Grand Slam is a much greater feat because all the great pros are in here fighting him as well as the top amateurs. Back in 62, Hode, Gonzalez, Trabert, Sedgman, some of those boys weren't playing. They're all in the tournaments now. Great shot. Backhand rolls past him, and Rod Laver rolls on towards the slam, towards the title, towards the $16,000 check. At Queen's Club in London in June, when he was beaten by John Newcomb, he's won 29 straight matches and almost seven straight tournaments since then. Eight. And the Lal, but he came out. He's come out of everything. Roach tried to make the shot. Roach is down in every respect. He is the loser. Won it. He's the slammer, the grand slammer, and Jack Kramer next to me applauding. We gotta do it. We gotta clap this The grand slam, and it's undoubtedly the winner of his second U.S. championship. He's won them all. Seven nine six one six two six two. No more that congratulates you and wishes many more victories, Rod Laver.
pleasure and to be standing here. I'm, I'm the one that's tongue-tied, but it's a great thrill to be standing here having won this last championship, and all I can say is that it's, I'm the luckiest fellow here in the stadium, and to everyone that came and put up with the bad conditions through this tournament, thank you very much. But, uh, I don't think Tony was at his best today. He had a very tough match yesterday, and I think possibly uh, a, little, a few small injuries uh, stops from playing their best tennis, but I'm very pleased and very excited about this victory. Thank you. Who I'm sure is, uh, his, his wife is expecting a baby any minute, and I think that $16,000 ought to hurry things along. <laughs> and uh, I'd just like to wish them both the very best of luck in, in the future. Thank you.